the fall of an empire, the lesson of Byzantium. What is motivating this? What is motivating this? And so <clears throat> it's all happening. Here's the reading. It has been understood by most of those who have attained to a flesh and the devil or the warring between those influences of good and evil. As the soul is then a portion of the divine, you cannot get outside the whole. And yes, you are in a warring, struggling match, and it would be good if you got there with a good sense of yourself. <laughs> that would be helpful. All right, now we're going to take a journey with some of the biggest dealers of the dark forces on this planet, Mayans, Toltecs, and Aztecs. Yes. We're going to enter Shibalba, which literally means the place of fear and phantoms, the underworld with the dark lords. There is a lot written by these people. You notice in Egypt, everything's bright and beautiful, but in the Mayan, Toltec, Aztec, they really engage the shadow more often than the Egyptians did. And they show it very clearly and show your wrestling match with these. So let's take the journey down there into the dark world. Deep within your subconscious, your deeper conscious, deep within your heart are motivations, unrealized desires or urges that can overwhelm you and throw a shadow over you and your good intentions. And in the Mayan story, it says, a day came when one of the dark lords gave birth to a girl, of course. <laughs> I love the way this story goes. <laughs> and he named her Shaquik, which means blood maiden. Now, if you're really into mystical lore, you know that the quote is, the blood cleanses from all unrighteousness. And if you know a little bit about the feminine dynamic, you know that the uterus of your consciousness, the womb of your consciousness, in the lore of femininity is shed regularly in the blood draining out and a new consciousness, a new womb of thought is allowed to freshen itself. And you keep doing this as your consciousness keeps growing. Do you see what's going on metaphysically there? This is a terrific understanding by these ancient ones. Such an appropriate name for a daughter of the dark lord of the place of fear. Curiously, None of the Dark Lords realize that they have just birthed the one who would conceive the destroyer of the Dark Influence. And I put Shiva down there to let you know in the trinity of the uh, Hindus, Shiva is called the, the destroyer. The secret is Shiva is the destroyer of the illusion. That's what people overlook. A lot of Westerners that I talk to get all uncomfortable with this destroyer. And I said, wait a minute, it's the destroyer of the illusion. Just like the womb sheds itself, it's, it's film of consciousness, every f so often to bring fresh thought, fresh womb of awareness, so Shiva destroys your illusions until finally you get to full consciousness. Here is the great part of it. The dark lords have hung the head of the maze god. The maze god was supposed to overthrow the um, dark lords, the maze god twins. They went down there and they were defeated. And in the defeat, they took the head of one of the maze gods off and hung it on a tree. And it's forbidden to go to this place called the place of sacrifice. It's a dark, dangerous place and it's forbidden to go there. But Shaquik is a daring and brave woman. She goes to this dangerous forbidden place and she approaches the head of the maze god twin. He says for her to approach and lets the spittle of his godliness fall into her palm and she instantly is impregnated with godly life force. 
Here's the quote, the way it's written. In that instance, the skull let drops of spittle fall directly into the maiden's palm. She looked quickly and intently at her palm, but the spittle of the skull was not there. Then the skull of the maze god said, quote, in my saliva and spittle, I have given you my descendants. Now my head has nothing on it anymore. It is nothing but a skull without life. Go up then to the surface of the earth that you may not die. Believe in my words that it will be so. Then spoke, thus spoke the head of the maze god twin. Now here is a passage that follows this. Now all that Shaquik and the maze god did together was by order of the heart of heaven. Somehow within them, they were moved by this great influence of the heart of heaven to meet one another and to engage in this transfer of the previous godly energy that lost to the dark lords into the womb of this new hope. And she rises and gives birth to the hero twins who ultimately defeat the dark lords. And we see a picture of them drawn here by the Mayans in their full game uniform to play the ball game. And they have right thoughts on their minds and white breath in their nostrils. See their nostrils? Some more powerful than the others. Now, do you see the black and red circle on the one on uh, the left? That means he is not incarnate. He is in spirit. And the one on the right is incarnate. And notice the breath in the one on the spirit is much more powerful than the breath of the one incarnate. So it's showing you this duality. When Edgar Cayce was asked to explain the two witnesses in the revelation and this idea of the twins, he said, they are your two levels of mind working together. One is your conscious mind that's out here, and the other is behind the veil, your subconscious mind and they start working together. The maiden ascended out of the dark and gave birth to a new set of twins, the hero twins. Despite how the hero twins were being treated by their family, they held no anger or bitter bitterness toward them. In fact, the hero twins held no negative thoughts towards anyone. Their minds were clear and their hearts were calm. However, they possessed the fearlessness of their maiden mother. She entered the place of sacrifices alone and, a, and against the curse of the Dark Lords. This would prove to be their most powerful asset when they eventually face the Dark Lords in the place of fear and phantoms, Shibalba. Unlike the Maze God twins, their father and uncle, the Hero twins were never tricked by the Dark Lords. Thus, there was no laughter shared by the Dark Lords only concern and wonderment. After all the tests, including the night in the house of gloom, the hero twins overcame every test in the darkness and death. They knew deep within themselves that this was all an illusion, an illusion designed to create uh, confusion, doubt, and fear, using quiet, enduring faith, some magic, <laughs> much cleverness, the hero twins caused one death and seven death, see the symbolism there, seven spiritual centers, one death and seven death to be no more. So the dark lords had lost their power. Here is Itzamna teaching the hero twins how to engage in the battle with your dark forces. Even though the maze god twins were gods, they were naive and immature, and so have you and I been. Why? Because they represented an early phase of our growth as the children of God coming out of heaven into this world to learn and grow. Jesus is also taught this. He said that we are, quote, sheep in the midst of wolves, end quote. And he instructed us to be, quote, wise as serpents, but harmless as doves, end quote, Matthew 10. The hero twins reached a level that the maze gods had not. But here goes its ominous lesson of the four illusions. And I think this helps us a great deal to hear the four illusions as the Maya saw it. 
The first delusion is there is only one way to lose this game, is for you to quit. If you keep getting up, the game goes on. There is only one way to lose the game, stop playing. As long as you keep getting up from any losses or disappointments, you have the opportunity to win the game. Tip, even death is not a game ender because your soul never dies. Edgar Cayce taught, quote, keep on keeping on, be cheerful, knowing that as he sees fit, so will he give. Keep on working with, for, toward the more perfect understanding. Illusion buster number one. Number two, Shaquik teaches the hero twins, the more you play the game, the more you learn. The game requires that you face your opponent, come to know him, learn his strengths and weaknesses, and then engage him in a struggle for a higher ideal. In the game of life, your opponent lives in the underworld of your thoughts, emotions, and urges. These influences challenge you, often overcome you, and keep you from victory. You must become aware of them, engage them, and ultimately, as God said to Cain, master them. Illusion Buster 3, all the monsters you see are wearing masks. Forces opposing your efforts to become your better self often appear to be monstrous and unbeatable. But this is only their appearance. It is not their true nature. Many humans have faced terrible beasts in their lives and are victorious. Jesus taught, quote, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Illusion Buster 4, you have powerful help. Fear of the challenge and doubt about your abilities are your greatest opponents. Courage, faith, and endurance are your teammates. But it helps to know that you have latent talents and unseen heavenly help. Casey taught, quote, that you are alive, that you are conscious, that you have the opportunity in this period to apply yourself in the reconstruction of what man is to look forward to should encourage you to know that God is mindful of each soul. Then use the abilities that you have, and you have many. So as you see in the dark forces, a great deal of it is not to be avoided, but engaged and understood and subdued, mastered. And much of it is within yourself. If you look at the story of Shaquik and the Maze God and the Hero Twins, they are all energetic dynamics within your own psyche. And all the Dark Lords are the same. And this dynamic within you is engaged in a soul growth that requires that you exercise your will to become a master of all the influences that you wrestle with. Now, if you try to project this around yourself, that's true too. Now, out here, you also are engaged in a lot of situations and dynamics that can overwhelm you, but you must engage them, and in engaging them, do so with a sense of the higher forces, of the greater abilities, or as I showed you yesterday, the fruits of the spirit. They are more powerful than you think, and as you engage them, you transform the out, outer life as well. Okay, we're out of the dark forces, thank God. <laughs> now we're with the fairies. Um, and as I told you, Edgar saw these creatures, mostly when he was younger and then towards the latter part of his life. Uh, but many others did, and um, there's a story at ARE of the prayer group uh, leader, Ruth Lenore, way back, I was uh, there in, when I was uh, probably around 24 years old in the 70s. Oops, I just gave away how just, I'm real old. Anyway, Ruth Lenore, I w worked with her, I knew her. She was a blithe spirit of holiness and yet cantankerousness. She was a wrestler for the light. And one day she was coming down the stairs from the headquarters building at ARE on the campus there. And she saw in the camellia bush, all the brownies were standing on the leaves in their red and green outfits with their curly shoes and their little curly hats. And they said, Ruthie, 
Go get your camera and we'll let you take a picture of us. Well, Hugh Lynn Casey's office was right next to that camellia book.